I will start with you. Should we nationalise the railways? Absolutely not. And I think that the problem at the moment is that we seem to think that the, private, that the railways at the moment are fully privatised, which is just not the case at all. A lot of these companies obviously are picked by the government in order for them to, uh, to, to do that leg. So, of course, you only have, like you said, Patrick, one particular company that serves London to Manchester. And the government is who decides that. This is not a marketised system. The government is deciding, not consumers. So, actually, the solution is to fully privatise the railways, like Japan has, and it's been incredibly successful. OK, uh, John Bosco, uh, same question. Should we nationalise the railways? I think I said privatised earlier. Apologies for that. Should we nationalise the railways? Well, I, I should probably start by saying that um, the suggestion that we should privatise the whole railway um, seems to lose um, sight of the fact that we did privatise our whole railway system. And over the last five years, all but one, and that one is Anna Crevelian, who was only Transport Secretary for one month, mm -hmm. all but one of the last four conservative um, transport secretaries has taken a railway line into public ownership from a private company that was doing an utterly terrible job. Mm. It is really important to recognize that the framework of incentives that we have put into the system incentivizes making profits or providing services for people. First Group, the company that runs um, Transport in Express and also runs Avanti West Coast, the ah. second worst railway <laughs> system uh, line in the country, uh, made £66 million in profits in half of last year. Their profits don't matter. I mean, who, who owns the tracks? The government does. Go on, John Bosco, respond to that. Their profits don't matter, apparently. Why, why do their profits not matter? We own... Actually, it's a really important point you make about the tracks. We did sell off the tracks at some point and we saw some horrendous accidents in our railway system in the 1990s the and we brought that back into public ownership we brought it back into public ownership and since then we've not seen those accidents happen let us bring our trains into public ownership the companies that run them are doing such a horrible job the, con the, the this conservative well, government that we know does not like to take services into public ownership, has taken services into public ownership. Let, That's let me, because let me, the private yeah, company... Let me put that to Reen, then. Let, let me put that to Reen, which is that the service that is currently being offered right across the country from train companies is not good enough for passengers, and that therefore it is... It can only get better if we nationalise it. I mean, it's just not true. And I think you're entirely mischaracterising the, the current system that we have. What is private or marketised about the current system where effectively the government is picking where these companies can come and go, where these companies are able to operate? Like we said, Avanti West Coast that serves between London and Manchester. Awful service. I have used that service many times before. It's terrible. And the reason why is because the government picked them. Now, in any normal private market you as a consumer get to pick where you put your money and if you don't like it you go somewhere else at the moment these are regional monopolies that the government have chosen john bosco when i look around the country at the moment and it's not just now it's throughout loads of times in history okay governments have traditionally unfortunately not run things that well okay and i'm just wondering why you think this would be any different well i think we should look at the examples of east coast rail for example um northern rail um Southeastern Rail. Well, Southeastern Rail was doing a terrible job, but they were also um, caught by the government. Um, essentially, I don't want to um, make any claims that will get me in legal trouble. But essentially, <laughs> um, holding holding back money that they were supposed to pay back the, the government. Right. So these are um, these are cases where services were horrible, especially East Coast Rail. Remember, Virgin had that horrible, horrible situation with the timetable change in 2018, took the service back from Virgin, and the service is now ranked among the, the best in terms of customer satisfaction in the country. Okay. Right. So this is clear. And we're not depending on the government to do this. We are depending on the incentive structure to do if this. You, if, if you, you nationalise the railways, that is depending on the government to, to run these things. And the government has the propensity to do more harm than good in every aspect of every industry. But, so what you are doing is you want the government to do more. You want the government to own these things. And the government do terribly at these things. Go on, John Bosco. Uh, the evidence is just the opposite of what you're saying, unfortunately. 
Well, what do you mean, we did used to have more of a nationalised train service, didn't we? And that didn't particularly work that, that well, as far as I can gather. But, Reem, what about the idea that if we did nationalise the railways, then all of the profit that is made from that stays within the uh, government coffers and within the taxpayers' coffers, etc., and that that might be quite a good thing? Because this is a very similar argument that is used when it comes to the waterways, for example, which are also an absolute shambles at the moment. I mean, this is the same argument we use with the NHS, for example, which is also an absolute shambles and it's, it's, a, it's a government monopoly. At the moment, all of these different regional companies are being used and being chosen by the government to be regional monopolies. So, so actually, on, on that then, Reem, so, so, so the problem at the moment for you is that it's not clearly that it's, uh, it's not been nationalised. It's the fact that it's the actual government that is choosing the companies to run the current services and that the companies the government is choosing are rubbish. But in principle, if we chose better companies, it would be fine. Well, it's, it's, it's a, you're exactly right, but it's the fact that the government are choosing the companies in the first place. I mean, any kind of market, so say, take the food industry, for example, if you don't like Sainsbury's, you go somewhere else. And if you don't like a particular local food shop, you mm. go somewhere else. If, the, if, if people stop giving them their money, then those companies will fail. Unfortunately, because the current system is effectively nationalising the tracks, it effectively means the government pick those companies, so the companies are not allowed to fail. OK, John Bosco, I am going to hit you with the example of the NHS, which is... Which, oh, no, no, I'm going to ask you this question. I am going to hit you with the example of the NHS, which is an absolute, complete and utter catastrophe and is a bottomless pit for money. Just, just this last two days alone, we've lobbed another billion quid at it, and that, as far as I can tell, just means more phones at GPs' practices and potentially longer queues at pharmacies, OK? So what would be any different about... Our railway system wouldn't we just end up throwing billions of pounds at it uh, and that would be that it just go, we don't know where it all goes sorry i just have to respond to the point that was made just now, um the last point there i'm not sure what the suggestion is is the suggestion that the government should not choose the companies and that private companies should build their own tracks and run their tra the, the trains on their own tracks if that is a suggestion then they can go right ahead and uh, we should run public trains on public tra tracks that serve the public and not the private sector. On the question of the NHS, obviously the NHS has a lot of problems. One of those problems is that there's quite a lot of privatization in the system itself. What over the privatization? Last years, that is seen, absurd. Seen, that is absolutely years, absurd that, that the NHS is a state monopoly. Being spent with public companies within the NHS, that's one problem. We've also seen a lot of on the funding of the NHS, that's a really important <laughs> problem as well. You're talking about money being thrown into the NHS, mm. um, but the NHS is being on, on the fund that we're spending per person, much less than other European countries. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. That said, I think privatisation is a significant problem within the NHS as well. We spend just below £200 billion on the NHS. How the hell is that underfunding? OK, well, look, what, what, it's, a, it's a great point to... Uh... Uh, bring this to a close. I don't think we're going to wait at any point of agreement here, but I, I very much enjoyed this discussion and this debate. John Bosco and Wogbo there, who is the lead campaigner at We Own It, and Reem Ibrahim, who is the, from the Institute of Economic Affairs. We were asking there whether or not we should nationalise the railways. It is in light of, of course, Transpennine Express being brought into national ownership. How are the